Peace and blessings, beloved. Come here to be educated, empowered, enlightened, inspired, motivated, and challenged to be critical and independent thinkers. Let's get to it. That one so, right there made me the greatest player of all time. For That's some what I felt. Reasons. I was super, super ecstatic to win one for Cleveland because of the 52-year drought. Like, I was ecstatic. Like, obviously, I showed that, that the first wave of emotion was when y'all, everyone saw me crying. Like, that was all for 52 years of everything in sports going on in Cleveland. And then after I stopped, I was like, that one right there made you the greatest player of all time. You know, everybody was just talking how they were the greatest team of all time. Like, it was the greatest team to ever assemble. And for us to come back, you know, the way we came back in that fashion, I was like, you did, you did something special. That's like one of the only times in my career I felt like, oh shit, like you did something special. I haven't had, really had time to really like sit back and think, but that, that was a moment. Peace and blessings, beloved. I pray all is well with you and yours. And welcome to the ID Me video series, LeBron James, Stand Up and Be Humble edition. Now my original plan was to title this LeBron James Ego and Delusion but based on the route that I'm taking in this coverage uh, the topic of humility became the dominant one so I'll cover Ego and Delusion in the postscript but in the meantime in this coverage what we'll discuss is what it really means to be humble to the world versus what it means to be humble according to God and of course you know where my focus is so I don't really think we need to do much of a setup as you saw in that video the comments that he made allow us to perfectly dovetail into a discussion of humility and the importance of understanding the value of humility and what humility will ultimately bring you and of course that wraps all the way back around to understanding your value, understanding your environment, having values and being firm and resolute in those values and in your awareness of self and environment. And so you always see the marriage or the convergence of the themes because my focus is singular and that's ensuring that we apply insight, knowledge, and understanding unto wisdom so that we can live righteous lives. And I know oftentimes we become enamored and somewhat blinded emotionally, spiritually even, by people that we see in the public eye because we want to be like them. We think that they have something that we can never attain or they have possessions and wealth and power and they live a certain lifestyle that we've been told to pursue. What I want to firstly cover is the fact that I don't necessarily think that LeBron is 100% insecure or delusional. In this case at least. But rather what I do think is that he's very strategic, he's very shrewd, he's very methodical in the message that he wants to put forth. Now we all know that he's very image conscious. He has no problem telling you how great he is. He doesn't wait for anybody else to tell you. <laughs> and depending on the level of maturity or wisdom that you have, you can either appreciate that or see it for the flaw that it really is. And we'll get into that uh, a little later. But getting back to who he is, um, two words come to mind, two attributes, egotistical and narcissistic. And of course, again, the apologizers, the fanboys won't like that, but it is what it is. And one other name in particular that I think will resonate with you comes to mind that shares both of those same attributes and that's one Mr. Donald Trump the current president of the United States of America and so if you think about the kind of individual that Donald Trump is 
by his own admission. Of course, he's never called himself a narcissist, not that I'm aware of, but in his language, in his body language, in his messaging, you see he has no issue calling himself great, telling you how wealthy he is, telling you how good of a businessman he is, how great of a leader he is. All of these things we have seen in similar fashion in the case of LeBron James. And so if you take both of these individuals, you can understand what exactly I'm talking about. And before we get to these clips, I'll share two final things. One is what LeBron James would likely purport the reason being for his braggadocio and then the other being what I really believe the reasoning behind this braggadocio is and so firstly there's a clip of LeBron and Kevin Durant in a car with Kerry Champion who was a reporter for ESPN and I'm sure many of you have seen this clip I believe it was about six to eight months ago somewhere in that time frame and he discussed a whole host of topics and so I'll play this short clip which I think sums up why LeBron made that statement and why he's made a couple of somewhat controversial statements whether it be his statements regarding the NFL and the owners and using the term slave mentality um, which I may touch on in a separate video I have to watch it in its full context to see if it warrants um, my time in that fashion but getting back here I think this clip with Kerry Champion and Kevin Durant will shed light into why exactly LeBron is at this phase of life that we currently see. Man, what are we headed to next? Man, mm -hmm. we're gonna head to my high school, St. Vincent St. Mary. Yeah. And uh, the point where I guess everybody start knowing who I was, I guess. The world famous. <laughs> like, don't let them be humble. The world famous St. V. Everybody know what that is. Hey, did you try to be a humble? Did <laughs> yeah. You know, to be humble? For real, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so real quick Before I cover the actual soundbite Quick correction I mentioned that the clip was from 6 to 8 months ago According to YouTube From the actual source, Uninterrupted They posted this clip on February the 15th of last year So, about a year ago Alright, so moving forward to the actual soundbite Before I get to LeBron's response to Carrie's question it's important that we focus or rather it's important that we understand the significance of being strong in our conviction being resolute in our decisions and our foundation and being aware that there are often external forces that will look to take us out of our character and to knock us off of our goal track and we have to be aware of that and those forces and variables and factors and understand how to gracefully and graciously reject and resist them and so what do I mean so you heard LeBron set up where the next destination was and how it was his high school St. Vincent St. Mary's and, and if any of you know anything about LeBron James' career, his, I guess his history, if you want to call it that, he really gained notoriety in high school for his stellar play, his above average play. And so KD knowing this said, you know, don't be humble, the legendary SVSM. Everybody know about that. So he, again, you have LeBron who is in his own way trying to be humble. I think he was, you know, setting up. He was fishing, as they say, I believe, just, just from what I've observed about his character. But the point is this. Let's just say he was trying to be humble. You have that response from KD. And then you have Kerry deepening 
uh, or digging further, if you will, by asking LeBron if he's tired of being humble. And so both of these external factors are seeking to take LeBron out of the character that he's projecting, one of humility, if you want to call it that, or at least the appearance of humility. But again, those two external forces were looking to knock him off his game. And what did he do? Well, clearly he took the bait because he said, yeah, he was tired a little bit. And even with that comment, you can see that initiated a laugh or spurred a laugh among the three of them. Because I think they all knew that there's nothing humble about LeBron James in the least bit. And so, again, relating it back to us, it's imperative that we never let any external force take us out of our character. And furthermore, as men, we must never allow the women in our lives, even if their intention in their mind is positive or righteous, we can never let them dictate our character. Sure, we ask for their input. Sure, we acknowledge and respect and admire and love and cherish their support. Absolutely. But we must understand firstly and foremostly what their nature is. And the nature of a woman is emotionally driven. And so you know, just based off what you've seen uh, emotions do to people, to situations, to organizations, etc. and so forth, so on. That it's very hard, if not impossible, to have any kind of substance, any kind of crisis foundation that's based off emotionality. Because emotionality is illogical. There's nothing that you could stand on firmly when, it's, when it comes to emotions, because emotions change like that I could be happy I could get a text look at my text see the text read the text and that text changed my whole disposition in a matter of seconds that's that's how swiftly emotions can change trajectory direction track focus mindset and so we cannot allow the women in our lives to have that kind of power over us because we are supposed to be the stability. We are to be the rock. We are to be the proverbial foundation in the relationship and that dynamic. So it's very important. It's very important. Now a man who is confident and resolute and assured in his humility and his manhood, then he could have just came back and said, you know, it's, it, those days were a blessing, man. Every day I'm thankful, you know, something like that, where he acknowledges what the root of all of that was, his God-given abilities, his God-given talent, his God-given genetics, all of those things. And once again, there's always a right and a wrong way to go about a situation. Now, mind you, whenever I offer up a strong critique, criticism, constructively, feedback, whatever, it comes from a place of godliness. And what I mean by that is, it's not merely my opinion based off of how I see LeBron James or any given individual topic. It's based off what I believe God has called us to do and what he's called us to be on earth. And so again, this is not anti-LeBron. It wasn't anti-Monte Nicholson or Kareem Hunt or Will Smith or any of the other individuals, Carmelo Anthony, uh, Conor McGregor, B. Magnum Madoff. None of them those people. But rather, it was addressing an issue in the context of the pursuit of godliness. Because that's what I believe we're here for. So that's what I temper everything against. That's what I present everything up against. So just so you know that for anybody who's 
listening to this channel for the first time, what have you. And so that's not me backing down from the strong feelings that I have about LeBron based on what I've observed and what I know. Um, never back down, no. Just wanting to provide clarity and context. But for us, our goal should be towards humility. Because with humility comes honor. And that's what we've been called to be, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. You don't gain favor in this world by being prideful or egotistical. I'm not saying that you won't have favor by the world. When I say favor, when I speak of anything positive, I'm talking about from God. Now you take that however you want to take it. But for me, that's the only favor and acknowledgement that I need. And so with that perspective, with that understanding, my point is that if you have any desire to live a godly life, then you must operate with humility. Now, what I really think the issue is with today's individual, today's athlete, today's celebrity, today's every man, is that we have the wrong understanding of what humility is and what it means to be humble. And what I'll do here is put up this definition of humble. And I think it'll provide some clarity. And so right here we have humble, not proud or arrogant, aka modest, having a feeling of insignificance, inferiority, subservience. And then we have low in rank, Low in importance, low in status, low in quality, just plain lowly. And then if you want to use the verb, to humble someone means to lower in condition, to lower in importance, to lower in dignity, to abase, or to destroy the independence, to destroy the power, and or to destroy the will of. And so with that understanding, I, I get it. You know, you you don't want to seem like you're less than or lowly or uh, meek or timid or weak. However, the humility that we should aspire to is a different type of humility. It's a godly type of humility. And what I'll do is, a little later on, I'll get into why this humility is in our favor and to our benefit and not the way the world sees humility because again it's very important that we understand that pride narcissism and ego aren't attributes that we should want anything to do with it's just that simple now some would say you should want to be confident and bold and assured absolutely you should and you can do that and still be humble the question you must ask yourself is where does your confidence derive from what are you assured in and what are you assured by and what makes you bold what emboldens you what empowers you and if the answer to any of those questions involves you and you alone then you have an issue you have a problem and you should want to re-examine why you feel that way and seek to change it. All right, and beloved, so what I'll do here in an effort to keep the length of this particular coverage reasonable, <laughs> I'll stop here and save the talk on insecurity and delusion for the postscript. And with that, I'll also save the reactionary clips for that postscript as well but what I will do to conclude this video is show some Bible verses that touch on the topic of humility and the importance of humility and how God sees humility which is ultimately all that really matters and so with everything that I do and share it's my prayer that you receive the message with the love intended and that you apply it to wisdom As always, 
I appreciate your support. I appreciate it. Thank you for it. None of it ever goes unnoticed. And as always, I look forward to sharing and growing with you. Always have, always will. So on that note, until next time, be blessed. Be a blessing.
that's a wrap. Don't forget to like, share, follow, subscribe, and comment. Also, check us out on IG, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Patreon, all under Lusu Media Group. And as always, you can get in-depth content on Patreon once you subscribe. Also, check out our Lusu Designs Lifestyle Apparel, which you can now purchase online. See the description for the links. And last but certainly not least, shout out all my sponsors for their support. Definitely appreciate the love on their end. The info is also below in the description. Alright family, until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.